going to be taking a look at this underwater scene. So it's fairly simple to do, but there are some pretty interesting techniques involved. So let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in an Alembic mesh. So add an Alembic mesh node, navigate to my assets and bring in this WLB text. Now you could very well use the Fusion text tool. What I've done is made this in Blender. And the reason for that is it gives us a far better UV map than you can get using the Fusion tool. But by all means, use that. And obviously you won't want to use this text anyway. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my first texture, texture there, and let's pipe it into the Alembic mesh. Let's just switch on 3D lighting. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in my other texture, which is called Cracks, this one here. So what I'm going to do with this Cracks texture, which looks like this over here on the left, is I'm going to use it, first of all, for a bump map, and secondly, for the specular map. So we can just have some shiny metal and some matte rust. So first of all, let's add a bump map like this. Let's maybe set the height scale to something like five. And what I need to do first of all is to add a blin after that texture map like that. So then we can pipe the bump map output into the bump map material. We've now got a bump that is differentiating the rust areas from the other areas, but it's the wrong way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our cracks. We're going to add a custom tool. I'm going to come over to channels. In the red field, so we're going to type 1 minus C1, and we're going to copy and paste that into the green and blue. And now you can see that that has been inverted. So as I say, we also want to use this for the specular map. To create a specular map, we're going to need to add a luma keyer to this RGB image. Again, I'm going to take my custom tool, which has got my inverted image, pipe it into the luma keyer, and it's looking like that. Then I can take the luma keyer output into the blinds specular intensity. And now hopefully you can see that the rusty areas are matte, but the metal areas are still shiny. The final thing I want to do, and I am getting a little bit carried away here, is to add in some grunge to the bump map where the rust is. At the moment, the rust is completely flat. It's matte, but it's also flat, and that's no good. So to do that, I'm going to add in a merge, and I'm going to drop it in just here on the path into the bump map tool. Then I'm going to add a fast noise. And because my cracks texture is 4K, I'm going to come over to my fast noise image, set the width and height to 4096. And then I can use that fast noise and add it to the merge. So let's come over to the merge and let's turn the alpha gain down to zero. So let's first of all, just come back to the fast noise and set its scale to something like 500. So now you can see we have indeed got that bumpy rust look, but we've made everything else bumpy as well. And we don't want that. So we can take our cracks image and we can pipe it into the effect mask input of the merge like that. We need to come into settings for the merge, set the channel to luminance. And now I think you can see that we have got that bumpy rust only on the rust areas and not on the metal itself. So probably a little bit of overkill on this, but I thought it was probably quite interesting to show you a process like this if you're not familiar with it. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add in an environment. So I'm going to add a 3D shape and I'm going to merge it with the Alembic mesh like this. And let's look at the result. So for this shape, I'm going to choose cylinder and I'm going to come to transform and I'm going to unlock the scale. I'm going to have 75 for the X, 25 for the Y and 75 for the Z. If we have a look at what that's doing, you can see we've got this very large environment around everything like that. Let's just now add a 3D camera to that merge. Let's add a 3D renderer as well. And let's look at the 3D renderer and let's 
select the camera, let's come to its Z translation and set that to 10. So there's our environment in the background there, it's currently white. What we're going to do is we're going to add a background and we're going to pipe it into the shape there, that's our cylinder. We're going to choose gradient instead of solid color. We're going to set the X start to 0.5, the Y start to zero, the X end to 0.5 and the Y end to one. And let's just select this color here, the white, take out the red, take out some of the green, and then let's click here to add a new tab like that. Let's maybe make this color here, the one we just selected a little bit darker. And then we can just play with the position of these tabs. So if we want kind of more black, which is what I do, I want more black going up to the sort of roughly there. So I'm just dragging that to the right. I'm going to drag this one a little bit to the left and this one here, again, drag it to the left. So we get a little bit of bright edge at the top there. That's like our sky poking through the ocean. So the next thing I want to do is add in the water surface. So I'm going to add in a new 3D shape. I'm going to add that to the merge and a plane is good. I'm going to set the X rotation to negative 90 and the Y position to one. And I'm set, going to set the scale to 25. So to give it the texture that we want, we are going to add another fast noise and let's pipe it directly into the shape like that. Let's set up the fast noise scale. Let's go for something like 40. Let's just give it a seethe rate of 0.3. And then if we press play, you can see that water is rippling quite nicely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a spotlight to this merge. Let's enable lighting and shadows on our renderer. Now this does need to be the software renderer for this. The hardware renderer is not going to give us the shadow effect that I'm looking for here. Let's come back to the spotlight. Let's set its Y translation to six and its X rotation to negative 90 like that. So now you can see we've got this light firing down through the water. I want to come back to this shape here, which is our background and material. And I want to turn off lighting and shadows because I don't really want to have to worry about lighting it. So let's come back to our spotlight controls. Let's turn the cone angle all the way up and the penumbra angle all the way up as well. So then after this shape here, that's the water surface, I'm going to add a 3D transform and I'm going to set its Y position to 2.5. Because what I want here is I just want a lighting effect on the text. You can see that because the light is firing through that fast noise texture, it's giving us this nice rippling effect on the text like that. And I might just rotate that light just a little bit to something like negative 80 and then bring it forward on Z by one. So we're getting a little bit more on the face and the edges. And coming back to this shape here, I do want it to be a little bit higher. So adjusting that Y value, so it's just off the top of the frame there. Let's go for 2.9. Now the position of that texture to the spotlight is pretty critical. If it's too far away, it's not going to give you that shadow effect. So what we're going to do also though, is to use this as the source for the rays. I'm going to add a new 3D merge. I'm going to take my shape and output it into that 3D merge. I also want to take my spotlight and add it. And I want to take my camera and add it. And then what I want to do is add a new 3D renderer after that. And this time we can actually use the hardware renderer and let's turn on the lighting. And then let's have a look at what we've now got. So now we've got the ripples on their own like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge them over the top of the other renderer. And let's have a look at that. And I'm going to set the off again down to zero. We're going to need to move it up a little bit because it's overlapping with the text and I don't want that. So I'm going to add another 3D transform. Just drop it in here. And then just let's just move that up till it's sitting on the top of the text, I think is probably about right. So then what we can do is after this renderer here, so this renderer that's just rendering the water surface, we can add a raise. And let's just look at that on its own. We're going to set the Y center to six, and then we're going to adjust that threshold down till we get something like that. Let's look at the merged result. 
Let's drop this decay value down because that increases the length of the rays like that. There's all sorts of controls you can play with here just to get exactly the looks that you want. That's kind of not too bad. After this, I'm going to add a brightness contrast and I'm just going to knock back the gain because I don't actually want the water surface to be too bright, but I do want those rays to be quite prominent. That's probably pretty good. Let's just add in a camera move. What I stupidly omitted to do here was to set the timeline range to 240. So please do that before you proceed. Let's first of all come to the camera's Z pivot, add an expression, pick whip the Z translation, and then add a negative sign to the front of that expression. And then we can just rotate around the center of the scene. Just makes life much, much easier as you can see. So I'm going to come to the first frame, add a keyframe for the Y rotation, set this value to 20. And then I'm going to come to the last frame and set it to five, I think. And then come to the first frame, keyframe that Z position there. And then at the last frame, set it to nine. So we're rotating around like this and moving in. So almost done, really. What I want to do, though, is I want to add in some particles. So I'm going to add in a particle emitter and a particle render node. And I'm going to take the render node out into this main merge here. So there's our particles there. So let's come back to the particle emitter. Let's set the region to cube. Let's have a width of seven, a height of five, and a depth of seven. Now they're kind of more evenly spread through the scene and they're behind the text as well as in front of it. There's too many of them, so let's set the number down to three. Let's have a life of 35, life variance of 15. Let's come over to the style. Let's switch over to blob. Let's open up the size controls. Let's have a size of 0 0.025, size variance of 0 0.01. Let's also open up the fade controls. Let's have 0.25 for the fade in, 0.75 for the fader out. So now we've got our particles. They probably really ought to have their own lighting, but I kind of think that's probably all right, having these kind of darker splodges. So the only other thing I want to do is after the particle emitter is add a particle turbulence. And let's set the X, Y, Z strength to one. And this is just going to make them sort of drift around a little bit. You probably can't see until we actually render it. So I've got a little bit of an issue up at the top left-hand corner here, and that's because our dummy water surface that we're using for the shadow is not quite high enough. So let's maybe set that Y value to 3.45, just to take care of that camera move. So there you go. Without overcomplicating things, we've got a fairly interesting looking scene. So I hope that was useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.